Good morning, Asia. Welcome to uh, Privateer FX for Friday, April 6th. We have the jobs number out of the U.S. coming up in a f 12 hours or so. Um, the only thing that really matters, the only thing we're focused on is the average hourly earnings, again, which has been the focus really for the past year, you know, just tr trying to keep an eye on inflation and see if the Fed is behind the curve or not. You remember two months ago when the average hourly earnings came out hot, um, that was a, the kind of the start of the equity market sell off in that VIX implosion. So um, <clears throat> that's what we'll be focusing on tomorrow. And we, you know, we like trading, you know, on a high average hourly earnings number, um, pretty comfortable selling things like Australian dollar, um, even the, you know, even the Euro to some extent. Um, let's pop over the currencies here. Let's see if there's any, anything, uh, anything going on with that. You know, so Australian dollar, you know, if we do get a high number, a high average dollar, there's like a 0.4 reading. This area here, this 7640 area is, is big. Um, could see that being taken out you know we're hanging around this 7660 can't really close below the three-quarter fib of this big swing so that would be the cattle so on the you know if it is a lower average dollar earning then uh, you know then I think we can probably get back up you know kind of 100 150 points over the next couple trading days um, <clears throat> in the past hour or so uh, Trump came out <laughs> It's, it's really ridiculous and it's embarrassing to be an American. I don't want to get into the politics of this, but um, he came out and said that um, so a week or so ago he came out and said he was going to impose $50, bill, $50 billion worth of tariffs and China came out a couple of days ago saying the same thing. They're matching it. So this is perfect example of game theory well of course trump who cannot keep his mouth shut has said um that he they could consider a hundred billion so what happened well let's go back to the equity chart you can see because the biggest mover well here while we're while we're here <clears throat> let's look at dollar yen on the hourly Dollar yen closed up at uh, 107.40. Was strong all day long. Nice march higher, and then you can see this. Hour, this is when the Trump comments came out. Went from 45 down to got to just uh, around the figure. So we have a couple of hourly lows there, which could be good inflection points for the NFP number tomorrow. Um, the more dramatic uh, reaction to that 100 billion number. Um, was here in the NASDAQ and the NASDAQ closed at around 66.10 sold off about 110 points 120 points got down to 64.90 we're back up here at 65.18 um, you know but certainly some damage done and, and this is after seeing the NASDAQ and the S&Ps have um you know, big, a big rally. This this day here, let me just get the pointer on this day here, was the China news on Wednesday. They sold stocks uh, before New York got in, got down close to the 200-day moving average, then had a massive bullish engulfing. Today, we kind of settled like mid-range. I mean, it was very strong early, got just above the 100-day. Um, and look where we stopped, 66.52, this, this half fib, double top now. So, you know, if we get a high average all our earnings tomorrow, I think that's negative stocks. It'll be good for bond yields, and it should be overall positive for the dollar. Uh, we're starting to think that the dollar is now put in a uh, important bottom, and there's a fairly tradable, you know, kind of two- to four-week bounce in the dollar. Um, 
which has been one of the weakest dollar pairs of the year. You know, I could see this getting back up to 108 tomorrow on a strong print and then, you know, continue hiring, maybe even up to this uh, uh, 110 50 area, which is the, uh, or 109, what is it, 109, yeah, 109 50, which is the 100 day. Um, we were reading something earlier, we were talking uh, about euro, euro dollar positioning, and there are about 9 billion euros bought on the break, well not on the break, but when we broke out of, when we broke one, uh, let me get back, I'm going to go all the way back to January here, when we broke this old high here, 120.90, here's the up bar, and we closed up here and barely, you know, really barely pulled back at all. We have not seen that level since early January. And I was reading that there were about nine yards of euros bought on this move up. And look what it's done. It's just pretty much gone sideways. Almost have a double top up here, 125, 37 to is that 55 was a high 125 55 and that's gone completely sideways so we're starting to think you know here we are on the short swing we're we're, we're looking at this um, fibo here but we're starting to think that anyone that has sold dollars in this case bought euros and they've watched since the beginning of january you know they got the four or five hundred point rally then back down to 120 150 and then it's really just gone sideways and you know we're making lower highs um, we think that a, a high average all the earnings could um, we could take out this 121.50 area which also matches up with the 100 day moving average and see no reason why we can't get a lot of these late longs out of the uh, out of their long euro positions Maybe even back down to one nineteen fifty. You know, one of the, one of the favorite trades is to be short dollar in the first quarter. And it's worked quite well. You know, less so for the euro. Um, you know, dollar yen since the beginning of the year. Here's the beginning. Of, this is January right here. A little pop early, and then it's been straight line down until in the past few days where we've had a decent bounce. So we think uh, we think the short dollar trade could come under some severe strain um, and you know I wouldn't be surprised if US 10 year yields go back to that 3% level so something to keep in mind and a high a, a high print for this average hourly earnings could be the catalyst we also have uh, Jerome Powell the new Fed chair speaking midday uh, midday New York uh, it'll be interesting to see what he has to say. Um, so, you know, there should be some fireworks between that and all the Trump tweets and the trade talk and t and uh, NAFTA BS, and we also have Canadian jobs tomorrow. There should be some decent volatility, um, you know, between now and uh, the New York close tomorrow. Anyhow, uh, have a great weekend. Good luck trading, and we will... You'll hear from us on your open on Monday. All the best.